Hello. Today I am going to discuss about Z API and REST API. Z API was proprietary API tool from from the NetApp, and this is the SDK which was used to make an API call to the NetApp. You and now going forward, NetApp is going to deprecate Z API, and they are going to use REST API because things got more normalized and more standardized so people are using rest api and netapp is also giving a push towards the rest api so first we'll see like how we used to use uh z api and how we are moving towards the rest api and we'll look with a couple of examples so this is SDK and in order to make a CAP call as an example I want to see all the volumes I what I can do all these things with my volumes creating a clone information regarding the clone um, but I as in this example I just want to fetch the information regarding the volumes and from here I can choose whatever filter the query parameter will specify what kind of filter we want to utilize when we are making a call. So as an example, if I want to list only those which are online, I can just remove all other parameters. And in here, I want to check with the status which are online I want to see I want to see all the online volumes and that's it now I'll make a API call I'll regarding all that which are online right now and it gives us all the information regarding that but all the volumes like what is the state of the volume what is the size of the volume what is a whether the dedupe is enabled or not what flag is enabled so this this is the tool this is the sdk which we tend to ask from the net app and then we used to do the development on the top of that to make a z api calls and going forward this particular tool is going to get deprecated and the, all the scripts which are written on this one has to be written on the rest api so this is my cluster and if I want to access the REST API, I'll go over here. This is the API documentation. It will ask me to enter my credentials. So once credentials are added, it gives us the basic information about the this documentation. This is a Swagger, Swagger uh, documentation. Here we can see like what all features we can uh, make a call from this particular swagger tool and this is for local cluster and likewise we we can make a api call from all of this endpoints this is a documentation about that particular endpoint like if it's a cloud if it's a cluster regarding cluster this is a documentation if let's go we want to check the volumes in that particular scenario we'll go to the storage so all of these endpoints we can check check the network information SPM namespace SAN information and NVMe and our concern one is storage 
because we want to check the volume information. So in here, if, if I want to get, get the volume details, I'll go over here. We look for the endpoint slash storage slash volume. So this is the endpoint for volumes, and this particular feature was introduced with the 9.6. So all those features, when here it is mentioned, like this particular feature was mentioned in the 9.8 version. This particular feature was mentioned in 9.7 version. Likewise, this documentation has to be read, and depending upon the on tap version on your NetApp filer, you'll use that particular API call to fetch the data. So one thing to note right now, all our locks are, it's kind of unlock and it's not lock because it need authentication. So once I put the, give the authentication, it will get locked. There are three, uh, four prime operations we can do. We can do get, post, patch, delete. Get is like simply viewing the information. Post is like configuring the configuration. Patch is like modifying the configuration. And delete is like I'm just deleting the configuration. So in here, if I want to do a try out this one, Here, these are the parameters, these are the filters by which we can for the uh, filter out our output when we make an API call. And in here, we can uh, execute it. Here, we'll get the response. If the response is 200, then it's fine. If like there's an error 404 that or 402, 401, depend upon the conditions like if permission is not allowed. And then on the top of that, we have actual data of the response what we are getting. We can view it from here. So right now, I'll what I'll do, I'll just fetch the information regarding the volume. I want to try it out and let's try out without giving any specific parameter. So I'll just execute this endpoint. So it fetched the, all the information about the, all the volumes which are present in my uh, NetApp uh, cluster. If we log into this one, and I'll check the volumes. We have only four volumes. In here, we can view that it gave us the information regarding the those four volumes. If I want to navigate, like I want to go in depth detail about the volume one, just in here, I want to further filter it out with the volume one so in here in the name yeah, aggregate name I want to specify the name In here, I want to filter it with the name volume wall one and the information I want to see is all the information regarding the volume one. So I'll just first filter it with the volume one and see output how it looks like. 
I'll clear it first. Then go on the top. Specify the name. Yeah, here. Yeah. And now I'll make execute the command. So it gave me the information regarding that particular single class volume 01 and I want to list all the fields so I can use the wildcard star and I can make an execution and say we got all the information regarding that uh, that vo volume that this is a part of this aggregate and this volume is created on this particular SPM so in this way we can make the get call from the rest API and we can use the swagger to test out all the exposed uh, endpoints So once we are done, we can click cancel and you'll see that the cancel will turn into a tryout and we can, what we can do, we can even create a volume if we want with the post, we can perform the modification as well. So I can go, go and try it out. So I have an example written with me. So I'll just copy it. In here, in this aggregate, I'm going to create a wall four, which is going to be on this particular path. And this is the size of the volume, which we are going to create and it's in bits. And on this particular SPM, it will be created. So I'll just confirm there was no wall four. And now I'm going to make an API call. And we can see the response over here. In here, we can see this job, like once this particular task is done, we have to confirm it gives us a handle to the job. And we can we have to confirm whether this job has been completed successfully or not. And the how do we validate? This is URL and in here we can go and check the response that it got succeeded this job was successful and if I'll go over here and see the volume 4 has been created successfully so this is a way how it can we can perform the we can fetch the information we can create the volume and if we want to delete the volume we can use the delete endpoint in order to perform the deletion task I want to uh, I need the UUID number to get the UUID number I again I'll go over here in the get column. And I'll check the information regarding my wall 4. I want to try it out. Thank you. 
here in here we want to filter it with the wall 4 and we want to see all the information regarding wall 4 so we'll specify fields we'll use a wildcard field star and then we'll execute it this is our information regarding wall 4 wall 4 which we have created and this is a U UUID which will be utilized to delete we can't perform the deletion with the help of the name only so if I want to delete it I won't try this one I'll specify this UUID and then I'll execute and see the response so now if I go over this the response is 202 it's a good desirable result and it has been deleted we can go over here to copy this job and confirm whether this particular job has been completed successfully or not so we go over here we validate this endpoint and the deletion task has been successfully deleted if i'll go in ui wall 4 has been taken away so this is a small demonstration how rest api could be utilized and uh, since the uh, z api is already getting de deprecated so all the scripts has to be migrated from z api to rest api in future thank you